out with his political pundits what the best, uh, best move is. Now, we got Gerald Salente coming up. We got Paul Joseph Watson uh, coming up as well. Forgot to mention that uh, at the start because I'm so angry about what's happening here. And the fact that the fire's coming this way, it could burn down this studio. And, and FEMA will probably stand right there and roast hot dogs while it happens and then grandstand as saviors. Maybe even come to my house and take my guns. People will say, well, George Bush did it. Hell, Rick Perry, please take our guns. This is disgusting by a criminal, disgusting political class that thinks they own us and use every crisis for another out-of-control federal power grab. Now, lest you forget, remember Katrina. Remember the FEMA stand-down of all the police that tried to help and firefighters and rescue people and EMTs from around the country. Never forget that. So we're going to go to this piece reminding you that in an emergency, they'll load you into a super dome, but if you live in the wealthy high and dry area with a generator, they're going to come put you in handcuffs, blow open your gun safe, take your firearms, and five and a half years later, these people haven't gotten their guns back. Remember, that's who Perry called in was FEMA. That's what you'd expect from a cheerleader for Al Gore. Guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police Department in your home! Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police Department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. We need to make sure, too, that uh, whenever we knock on doors, people refuse to leave. We need to make note, call it in. They say there are no orders to use force, just strong persuasion, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. Marks, look and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. I said, it's not even loaded, and I dropped it on the floor. Well, they punched me in the face. Look at my black and blue marks. Look at, look at what they did to me. They dragged me out of here. I really thought that. Okay, so there's the terrorist in America. That's who the system is going after. And I want to encourage folks watching this show tonight here at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv, you who've made this transmission possible, to tape this, to record it. Uh, we're going to restream it after the show tonight and to get it out to everybody you know, post it on YouTube, you name it. Because the people need to understand, tyrants use any crises as a power grab. What government in their right mind would, for all intents and purposes, five years ago, now six, abolish the National Guard? The National Guard was always under the governor's control. Governors could ask other states to help them. They knew how to get bulldozers out, fire berms, knock out fires. I mean, the minute they got started, it'd be, come on in, fire department, help us the governor over the state. Now, our National Guard has been federalized. Most of them are overseas. The few that are here are standing around and FEMA tells them what to do. And our own state's fire departments are being told to stand down. I mean, it's unprecedented. It's just like people being arrested all over the country for having lemonade stands or uh, garage sales or uh, gardens in their yard. You know, 93 days in jail the lady faced. It, it, it seems obscene and crazy. Well, Hitler seemed obscene and crazy. Stalin did. Mao did. It's about power. It's about breaking your will. And our republic is under attack. Now, expanding on this before we get to Paul Watson uh, and Gerald Salente and this extended special InfoWars Nightly News report, I want to get into Fukushima because on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, we have links to mainstream news articles today where Fukushima is still melting down. Five of the six giant reactors have totally exploded and melted down. And in the last few weeks, they admit that 
Three days into Fukushima, happened on a Friday, by Monday, they knew that three of the reactors, later it was all five of the six, had exploded. I knew on that Monday morning when I watched the reactor ex explode that it was a complete and total meltdown and a meltdown explosion. And then I interviewed top nuclear physicists who'd been in Japan and who had gotten samples. Of course, Western governments all knew what the mushroom cloud meant, but it showed that fission had taken place, that a Chernobyl-type explosion, much bigger than Chernobyl, had taken place. That was reactor three with uranium and super deadly plutonium. And it turned out that they had 500,000 spent fuel rods, well, it was a total of 614,000, but, but on that particular uh, 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 reactor, the majority of them, 500 plus thousand, were stored on the roof and in holding tanks and were spewed into the air. Now, a couple months into this, how did the EPA respond? And you can go to the articles on our sites and link through the EPA. They came out and said, we're going to raise radioactive isotopes in the dozens of types that are in the air blowing across the Pacific onto the U.S., we're going to raise the isotopes levels. That's just one of many explosions. We're going to raise it from the levels that we say were safe to 1,000 times what they previously were with some isotopes to 25,000 with others and some isotopes 100,000 times what they previously said was safe. And it ran the gamut from 1,000 times, 3,000 times to 100,000 times with actual links to the EPA. And, and the EPA came out and said, Hey, we're going to have a public comment period. We're still going to do what we want, kind of like the Super Congress controls the power of the purse now, not the General Congress. And if Congress doesn't vote the way they want, the Super Congress just does it anyways. It's the same thing with the EPA. Oh, there's a quiet comment period where you can email us. We're going to raise the level of radiation uh, 1,000 to 100,000 times what's safe, and, but, but we'll take your comment. And of course, the vast majority of comments by scientists and others were, this is a horrible idea, radiation's very bad for you, and they just said, we don't care. And they did raise it a few months ago, after a month-long comment period. Now, the Prime Minister of Japan's had to resign over this. Most of the other ministers have. They've got radiation sickness, people are dying, they've tried to keep it quiet. Uh, but I've even been in hotel rooms and watched Japanese TV in English on it, where they're now admitting it. I was out in L.A. about a month ago and, and was shocked to see them admitting what we were getting from reporters months before. So it's now come out. But the only place it hasn't come out is here in the U.S. A month into this, they were having levels 25, 30, 40, 50, depending on what state, as far away as Vermont, on the other side uh, you know, of North America from Japan, uh, over across the Pacific, in milk, in produce. When they had Chernobyl in 1986, for six months all over Europe where the plume hit, from northern to western to eastern to southern, they brought food in from other continents, frozen. They brought frozen powdered milk in. No one was allowed to eat the cows. No one was allowed to eat the milk where it aggregates and, 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 and builds up, bioaccumulates is the proper term. No one was allowed to eat it or touch it. And they estimate the UN does over a million deaths from cancer. Here, the Japanese got caught just mislabeling stuff as foreign to let folks eat it and turned it out, uh, turned out it was very radioactive. Then, expanding on that, I just can't believe this is happening. It comes into the United States and they just raise the level and say it's safe. The elite have gone crazy. They're on such power trips, they're fiddling while Rome burns like Nero. They think they're invincible. All right, let's go ahead and get into some other important news dealing with brainwashing. That's right, brainwashing. We're being taught the official fable that 9-11 was an outside job, but when you actually study the facts, it is a complete fairy tale. Now, in the UK, as well as the United States, it's now being added to children's textbooks, uh, the complete official story. Now... The mayor of London has made some very bizarre statements, and we're going to be uh, looking at this in more depth in just a moment. But there's the report at Infowars.com. Official 911 fable to become part of school curriculum. Government supported effort to encourage critical thinking actually encourages obedient 
regurgitation of lies. This upcoming Sunday marks the 10th anniversary of the tragic attacks of September 11th, and we're going to be having special reports every weeknight looking at different facets of 9-11. This coming Thursday, we're going to look at the 10 smoking guns of 9-11 that prove that the attacks were an inside job meant to create a pretext to destroy our constitutional republic, establish a domestic police state, and launch a global corporate empire that would be defended and expanded using American blood, sweat, and tears. But I wanted to talk to Paul Joseph Watson of PrisonPlanet.com, who joins us from England, with a breakdown of an article he wrote today, Official 911 Fable to be Part of School Curriculum. Then we're going to expand into some other news reports, RAI, Novostat, and others. Al-Qaeda acquires weapons in Libya, EU official, head of counterterrorism says, and more, including the one, the only, Chuck Norris coming out and saying, why is the government rebranding the threat of terror from Muslim Al-Qaeda onto Tea Partiers, conservatives, and predominantly wicked white people? Joining us with more on all of this is Paul Watson. Paul, uh, this is uh, pretty amazing, but it's hidden in plain view. The official fable, despite the fact that in some polls the vast majority question it, the official fable of 9-11 is to now be taught to U.S. school children, force-fed. Well, in the United Kingdom as well, yeah. I mean, this, this reeks of creepy top-down government-sponsored indoctrination. Uh, and what this is about is a Lon it's called the London 9-11 Project, and it poses as a charity, but in fact it's a creature of, of the establishment. It was actually launched yesterday in London with this unveiling of this macabre 9-11 memorial by the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson, uh, and this charity is also supported by the Port Authority of New York, uh, Common Purpose, which is a in, it's a steering committee in the United Kingdom, um, and many figures of the establishment, including the treasurer of the Conservative ruling party in Britain. Uh, and this whole project claims that it's about encouraging students. They're going to be aiming this at teenagers, uh, 12 to 16 years old in British schools, to and encourage students to engage in critical thinking about 9-11. And yet its first mandate when it was rolled out was to, quote, demolish conspiracy theories about the attacks. That's right. Or we have the London Telegraph uh, interview, and, and it was in your article yesterday, but this is also going on here in the U.S., a similar program is why I raised that point, with the mayor of London, like Bozo the Clown, unveiling... Uh, the, uh, this new memorial and then saying it's our job to have a controlled demolition of these conspiracy theories that 10 years on continue to grow. And we've got all these BBC hit pieces, US hit pieces, 